Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Flipgrid in your own Canvas course as an instructor. Uh, Flipgrid is a video discussion board that's very popular nowadays in both colleges and K-12 schools. It's really fun, it's a great way to increase the social and instructor and student presence in a course, especially an online course. You might use it as an introductory uh, discussion where people get to know each other, or something like a foreign language class where they can practice speaking uh, in the language they're learning or a, a normal kind of humanities type discussion but there's also examples of people using it in math classes and science classes and so forth to discuss concepts or share and uh, discuss the work they're doing in a class so check out flipgrid.com to learn more about the features and uh, how people are using flipgrid but in this video I'm going to show you how to connect it to your canvas course and there are a lot of other great videos that show you how to do this, but they, they're missing a few things that I wanted to show at the end of this video, uh, like what happens when you copy your Canvas course to a new semester, or what if you have multiple instructors, or what if you share your course with someone else, what do you do then? So we'll get to that at the end. First, I want to mention, too, if you Google for Canvas Flipgrid, you'll see a link to a PDF, Canvas Integration for Flipgrid, a nice handout they've made that walks through the steps I'm about to show you right now in case you do want to refer to it uh, while you're watching this video or in the future. So to get started, we need to uh, add Flipgrid as an app in our Canvas course. Unfortunately, uh, IT cannot or no school can enable Flipgrid site-wide on a Canvas site. You have to enable it one course at a time uh, and you'll see why in a minute. So start by going to your course. Here I'm just at an empty Canvas sandbox and go down to settings. Click on that and then click on apps and we're going to go ahead and search for Flipgrid in this little search field and hit enter and then there's Flipgrid, the Flipgrid app. If I click on that it has some information about Flipgrid and there's a blue button here that says add app. If I click that this is the part, this is why we can't enable Flipgrid automatically for you because uh, it asks for a consumer key and a shared secret. These are special keys that are used to connect your Canvas course to your own Flipgrid account. So we do need to actually create an account on the Flipgrid site, which is free, before we can start using Flipgrid in our Canvas course. So let's go back to flipgrid.com and you'll see it says educator login or sign up today. If you don't already have an account, you can click sign up today and you can sign up with a Google account or your Microsoft account. Here at our school, Valencia, uh, if you do sign up with Val Microsoft, we recommend not using the mail dot uh, email account. Use the one that doesn't have the mail dot in it because uh, we have two different emails. The mail dot one uh, might mess up with things. So I already have an account, so I'm gonna instead just log in real quick. And I did use my Valencia, and it shows uh, some existing video discussion boards that I've already been using in several other classes. And uh, it shows my name on the top right. And before we get into actually using Flipgrid, let's go ahead and get that secret key and so forth that we need to use it in Canvas. You, to do that, you want to click on your name or the arrow, the drop down here, and click on Integrations. Now mine already has a consumer key and shared, shared secret that I generated before, but in your case, if you're brand new to Flipgrid, you want to click on the new integration button and give it a name like Canvas Integration or your, your, your own name or your course name if you like, and it will generate a new consumer key and secret, and you, can, you, you want to copy both of these into that app back in Canvas. So I'm going to first copy the consumer key by clicking the copy button. I'm going to go back here to where we were under Add App and Paste, that consumer key, and then copy the, care, the shared secret and paste that. And, let me, and I had to pause the video there for a second because it shows the, the secret key. Then I click the Add App button and now Flipgrid has been added to the course. To see that it's been added, I can refresh the page or click on Home. And you'll notice on your course menu now there's a Flipgrid item. And you can click that if you want to check it out, but to tell you the truth, you really uh, most likely won't even need to use this menu item. In fact, if you wish later on, you can go to settings and then navigation, and you can hide that item if you want by dragging it down to the disabled area, 
there and then clicking the save uh, the save button at the bottom there to hide that Flipgrid item because instead most likely you'll want to use Flipgrid in a discussion assignment that's graded and it's integrated with the speed grader so let, let's go through that now how to create a video discussion uh, assignment in your course with the Flipgrid integration I'm gonna go to home and I'm gonna you can go to assignments but I'm gonna add uh, this video discussion activity to a module so I'll pretend like this is an orientation module and add that and publish it. And then to this orientation module, I'll pretend like I'm adding a, an introductory discussion activity using Flipgrid. It's actually not a Canvas discussion, it's an assignment because it's using a third-party tool. So I'm going to say Add Assignment, click New Assignment, and I'll call this Introductory Video Discussion. You can call it whatever you like. Whatever name you do use will be used by default to name the video discussion board in Flipgrid, but you can rename either one at any time. So I'm going to add that item, and it's still not published either. So I'm, I'm going to click on this introductory video discussion assignment and start setting it up by clicking the Edit button. And let me zoom out a little bit. This is what it looks like normally. Click Edit. Here's where you want to add a description, uh, like uh, what prompts what questions you want them to ans answer please enter introduce yourself and share your thoughts about whatever whatever prompts you have here they'll see too if they use canvas in their mobile app too you may want to embed a video here too uh, uh, by clicking the second from the left button on the bottom row of the editor toolbar or you can paste a link to a YouTube video that you've made if you wish and let's scroll down here to the points. You can set the points. And here's where we enable Flipgrid, where it says submission type. Instead of no submission, we want to change it to say external tool. And then click find. And in this list of third-party apps, it's alphabetical. So we want to look for Flipgrid and click on that and then say select. You can optionally have the Flipgrid discussion board load in a new tab. I found it's not really necessary, though. Uh, but some people prefer to do that. Then you can set the due date as you see fit. And if you wish, you can just save it now or go ahead and save and publish. We still have to do a little bit more to set it up, though. So I click Save and Publish. And you see when you load the assignment, it's ask, asking us to connect this Canvas assignment to what they call Grid in Flipgrid. A, a, a Grid in Flipgrid is essentially a video discussion board. Uh, if you do have an existing grid that you've created before in Flipgrid, you can reuse it here if you wish, but most of the time you'd want to create a new course grid. So I'm going to click on that. And by default, it creates a new grid on Flipgrid that is given the same name as our Canvas assignment, which I call it Introductory Video Discussion. Uh, and really, if you want, this is all you need to do uh, at the minimum to set up Flipgrid and using this assignment. If you wish, as long as the assignment is published, students can go ahead and use it right now just the way it is. But if you do, do want to customize it some, you can click this pencil icon. And this is where you can change the name of the grid if you wish. And uh, here's where you can change the maximum amount of time, the, uh, the length that videos can be in the discussion board. Uh, this is a nice feature now since Microsoft recently bought Flipgrid. They've allowed all the premium features in Flipgrid, like you can have up to five-minute videos uh, in the Flipgrid discussion board. But for something like an introduction, a minute and 30 seconds or so on, that's probably perfectly fine. Here's where you can change the description of the grid in Flipgrid. I usually delete this first sentence that says this topic is automatically generated from the Canvas assignment. Uh, but the second sentence is useful to keep where it tells them how to click the green plus button, which you'll see in a minute, to record their video. If you scroll down, there's some other options. I, I am still relatively new to Flipgrid. Uh, I'd leave most of these options untouched. Um, I would recommend not having require an email for responses because that just only adds another hurdle for students to post here. Uh, you can, if you're done using Flipgrid, you can change it to inactive or frozen but usually don't need to touch that either. And here's, uh, here's one thing I do like to do though. I like to post my own video uh, at, at the top of a Flipgrid assignment 
just because it is a it is a video discussion board so why not use a video to introduce the discussion you can quickly record your own video right here by clicking record a video and that's nice that's what I've been using but I found that uh, one issue is that is the next time you teach the class and you create a whole new grid you'll have to record your introductory video all over again so you may wish instead to record the video and put it on YouTube or something like that and here you can just click add a video to add a link to a YouTube video or like I said earlier you can embed the video in the canvas description and that will appear up top too and you'll see some other options below like if you want to attach any resources to the discussion board if uh, Flipgrid has some fun features like students can annotate their videos with stickers or drawings and uh, I mean to me it doesn't seem to harm things too much to keep that on video reactions so I keep that on too that allows uh, students to react to videos another little fun feature and whether you want to allow student to student replies that lets you have a threaded discussion board where students can reply to each other it's usually a good thing to keep on and there's some other default features there but click update topic when you're done with the settings uh, of setting up your video now it's ready to go uh, as, again as long as your uh, assignment is published uh, so let's see what it looks like from the student point of view and you can test this out yourself by clicking on home on your course and going to student view Here's what you'll see too. Is the assignment published? Is it accessible to students? In this case it is. So I'm in student view because you can see the fuchsia bar at the bottom. Clicking on this and they'll see the ear prompt at the top, the top and they'll see that big green plus button. That's what I was referring to also. You'll also see in the resources for this, uh, this video that I'm recording right now, links to a sample video or a couple of videos that uh, you might use for students to show them how to use Flipgrid from the student point of view. They click the green plus button and it may prompt the browser to allow the browser to access your video camera and microphone. You can see me here. It's not recording yet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click record and get this. Uh, and it's hard to see because I'm in uh, a smaller window for this recording. And it will count down three, two, one. And hi there, this is a test recording. When I, I'm done recording, I can click pause and you can redo it with the trash can or go ahead and click next now it shows you what it looks like again you can still you can still redo but i'm going to go ahead and, go ahead and click next uh, and then snap a selfie <laughs> you can annotate it with the stickers like i said i'll click next again and then enter your name if you wish and then submit my video and there's my video now in the, the video discussion board. I'm going to leave student view now and show you how you can grade and look at the student videos. I'm back in the teacher view and I can see that, hey, a student has submitted something. I can click on it to view it there. Uh, there's some other actions you can do with the video too. But that, how do we uh, grade it? We can go to SpeedGrader and there's perfect integration between Flipgrid and SpeedGrader. It, it shows one student at a time in SpeedGrader, as you may already know. And when you are looking at a particular student, it will automatically show that student's videos in SpeedGrader. Here I can enter their grade. If you have a rubric set up attached to this assignment too, you can use the rubric. You can also uh, leave some private video feedback if you want with this green button, or you can click this green comment bubble here to leave a, a, a more public video reply to your student if you wish. Um, you can also leave comments and so forth. And that's the basics of using Flipgrid in your course. But again, there's a few little gotchas to watch out for uh, or some special things to watch out for that I couldn't see covered in other videos, so I want to cover them now. One is, uh, what if you do have more than one teacher or more than one facilitator in the course and you want them to uh, be able to edit or uh, so on the Flipgrid discussion? This is where uh, I've used this Flipgrid menu item that's created by default in the course. And this will show all the different Flipgrid grids used in the course. And you'll see a little uh, link here that says Add Copilots. These are like adding other teachers to the Flipgrids in your course. If I click that, I can enter the uh, school email address of another teacher or facilitator in my course to give them sort of administrative access to the course grids used in the course. A second issue is what if you roll over your course, copy your course to another semester. 
uh, unfortunately, you can't. I wouldn't just assume that everything's still going to work perfectly in Flipgrid. You're going to need to go back to any of your Flipgrid assignments and uh, prompt to add, to create a new grid again. I usually would edit the assignment settings and attach this assignment to a new Flipgrid grid, so you're not just reusing an old Flipgrid discussion with last semester students. A second, more tricky issue is what if you share your course with someone else? Here, they're going to need to go to settings and apps again and because they're going to need to enter their own uh, secret key, uh, their consumer key and shared secret. So they want to go to settings and then apps. And here, instead of searching for Flipgrid, Flipgrid is already installed in this course, even if you copied it for someone else. So they want to click on view app configurations. And this shows all the pre-enabled apps uh, installed in Canvas, but you'll see Flipgrid which was installed earlier, and click the gear icon and edit. If they go there, they can enter their own uh, consumer key and shared secret that they created with their own Flipgrid account. And then they will also want to go back to the Flipgrid assignments and, uh, and make sure that they, each assignment is uh, connected to a grid properly. Please contact the CTLI Center for assistance with using this tool. Uh, I know it may seem a little complex with that stuff I added at, at the end, but Trust me, once you get uh, going with it, it's not that hard to use at all. And I think you'll find it's uh, a very fun tool to use with your students. And again, great at in, uh, increasing the presence, uh, like the student presence and instructor presence in your course. Uh, Google around for different ways different instructors are using Flipgrid, uh, both in Canvas and without. Again, with math, foreign language, humanities, and so on. I hope you have a lot of fun with it, and good luck with your courses.